caught me drinking some water. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this month's episode of Action Items with Let's Talk Supply Chain, where we give you actionable takeaways related to all things digital supply chain and manufacturing operations and industrialized construction. I am your host, DC Spregula, and I am excited to have you join us either for your first time or again today. This episode is brought to you by Nugen Architects, a digital transformation consulting agency helping businesses navigate the complex world of technology and supply chain management. The NGA team of digital supply chain experts works with clients in all phases of the implementation lifecycle, from initial planning to post-implementation support. This includes things like tool selection, project and program management, and business transformation roadmaps. To learn how Nugent Architects can support your business scale, please visit nugentarchitects.com for more information and to schedule a free discovery session with a member of our team. The next thing that I'm supposed to do is read through the upcoming events for September. Uh, so we had a great time at the Atlanta Build Expo last month, um, as well as a great time at the Women in Manufacturing lunch, uh, which is actually how we found our guests for this month. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, we are going to be attending a couple of different conferences um, related to defense and manufacturing um, in North Carolina, as well as September, we have the She League here in Atlanta and um, the Minority Supplier Development Council as well as doing um, Supplier Development Week. So if you will be at any of those events here in Atlanta or if you are going to be attending any manufacturing conferences in North Carolina or the D.C. area, definitely reach out. We would be excited to meet up with you IRL in real life. Um, so today's show, we are going to be talking all things workforce development, reskilling, upskilling resources as we are looking to move into digital transformation and digital modernization. Um, I have been talking a lot with the team internally many of the conversations that we've been having at different conferences and a recurring theme is, you know, really workforce development within the manufacturing and the industrialized construction space. But what does that even look like? How do we actually execute on that? How do we make sure that as we're looking to grow our companies and become more digital, um, digitally literate, how do we bring our people along with us on the journey? So that includes a lot of reskilling, a lot of retraining, a lot of upskilling, um, and then finding partnerships to figure out how to make sure the new talent that we're bringing in already has some foundational elements for some of those skills. So we have a very special guest who is going to talk through um, how to actually execute on that with us. So we can go ahead and bring our guest up. Um, let's see, we have a couple of people who have already said hello. We have Gil from our team. I don't make him come to these, but he does come all the time. <laughs> he always has a lot of insights to share from the conversations that he's having on the ground. Um, Denise, it was great catching up with you this week. I'm looking forward to continuing our conversations. Um, so Michelle, tell me a little bit about, or not just me, tell everyone <laughs> a little bit about your background uh, in education and um, just uh, give a little, you know, shameless plug, <laughs> uh, you know, sales pitch about what you guys are doing from like the apprenticeship, you know, talent pipeline, that perspective of working with manufacturers um, in your area. Well, thanks for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Um, I'm Michelle Oglesby. I am one of the deans at North Georgia Technical College, and I think my official title, I oversee all of our industrial, automotive, and agriculture programs. Um, so a little bit about myself. I've got 10 to 12 years in education. I moved over and became a dean a little over two years ago. Um, and really what what we're doing here at North Georgia Tech is trying to make sure we're working with our industry partners. We serve an eight county service area in Northeast Georgia. Um, and as we are 
fine tuning our own programs, looking at programs to bring in and um, looking at what the workforce need is in our area, making sure that we are, are hitting the needs as best we can um, so that our graduates are going out into the workforce. They um, are someone that you want to hire and that they are bringing in the skills in order to help uh, you with your mission as you're, you're out working every day and, and building your own companies. Thank you for that introduction. Um, I'm going to I'm going to kick a question also to the audience. Um, I'm just interested to see what um, if if what we're saying is, you know, kind of resonating with people. Um, it's great if you have already lived through this and you have some triumphs to share and some tips and tricks that you can share with everyone else. Um, and if this, these are conversations that you guys are having internally with your team, um, essentially what we're hearing a lot of is I need people who understand digital and you know advanced manufacturing. I need them to know it now, but I can't find most people that know it. So my next solution in my mind is to develop that skill set internally. Mm -hmm. But then how do I do that? Um, so if you are experiencing, you know, kind of the same challenge or conundrum, um, what are some different solutions that you guys are looking at? We would love to hear um, what you're doing or if you're just like kind of suffering in silence and hoping that one day, one day someone will show up and they will, you know, have the have the solution. Um, but one of the things that you mentioned, Michelle, a word that stood out to me was, you know, identifying the needs. And that stood out to me because that is actually our first action item. Oh, good. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so, you know, from a manufacturer or company perspective on action items, we always want to make sure that we're saying and providing information that people can actually use Monday morning when they go back to work. So mm -hmm. one of that thing, one of those things is actually identifying and defining the needs. You know, if, if someone were to go to a North Georgia technical college and say, we need you guys to start to prepare students and or, you know, work with us to develop some sort of training for our current, you know, workforce. These are the topics that we need. These are the skill sets that we're missing. Um, how how have you seen that done or, you know, do people come to you with that information or do you kind of try to pull it out for them? How do you work with manufacturers to figure out what those needs are for workforce development? So we see a little bit um, of both. We and, and stop me if I start getting way too into academic talk <laughs> and jargon. Um, but all of our programs meet at least twice a year with the industry um, in a bit more formal setting. Um, we call them our advisory committees. And what they do is they're talking about their program. They're talking about what standards are being taught, um, what certificates we have that students are able to earn uh, within their diplomas and degrees. And it is really, it's meant to be a conversation between the industry in our area, our instructors, so that they're helping uh, guide our ship in the right direction. One thing that we, we see that we're battling is industry is changing rapidly especially with technology and, and how everyone is needing to embrace it. And so um, we run our programs off of state standards, but that doesn't mean that we can't continue to grow and change and adjust those standards for industry need. And that that's really where we need to be able to have those conversations with all of you guys about what is changing within your own industry, what you're looking to embrace, and then how we can kind of step in and help build that bridge from our graduates to, to what you're looking to hire and what you need within your own companies. Um, so that is, that's a great place to start is uh, reaching out to us or to the technical college in your area. There's 22 across the state of Georgia. We all share standards. We all share um, program objectives. And so being able to go through, revise and change the other piece that is really helpful in those conversations is we're able to embed additional industry certifications within our own programs. 
So um, we have had, you know, industry partners say we need uh, graduates who are OSHA 10 certified, OSHA 30 certified, forklift training, or any other thing in between. We can work to bring that into the curriculum. That way, you know, by the first semester they've uh, received those certificates or before they graduate, um, they have those certificates. And that's things we're looking to do within each program area um, as we partner with our industry and what they need. It's above and beyond the state standards, but it makes our students more marketable and it makes them ready to walk in and be an asset to your company. Right. Now, a couple of things stood out to me um, and I should have been writing it down and I did not <laughs> um, But but one of the things that, um, you know, stood out is that you said that you work with industry mm-hmm. and you also mentioned the advisory committee. Mm-hmm. When you say you work with industry um, and and this is a question maybe for everyone, but also just a question for me personally. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that at the federal level, there are different, you know, manufacturing, um, not necessarily committees, but let's call it a committee for, Mm -hmm. you know, all intents and purposes. And when they say we partner with industry, it's partnering with the Bosches of the world, Mm -hmm. you know, and the Fords. And and if you are a smaller, you know, manufacturer, small and medium um, what does it look like? How do how do I even know to navigate? Where do I find this advisory committee so that I can provide my you know insights and start to provide my needs and communicate my needs to this committee or whoever's creating the standards? Now that that's a great question because it's any school it starts to become very large and you don't know where to go first as a point of contact. Um, with our, within our school, our instructors are a great first step, um, reaching out and talking with them. They are helping students uh, walk into positions. They're, they're posting job position, positions for students to, to interview and start working at, even while they're in school. And so they, they really have a good pulse of the industry in our area and the, the people that um, are looking to partner they also head up their committees. So um, speaking with them first really helps uh, make sure you're on the email list, make sure you're there for the invite, um, but also the dean. So um, I don't mind sharing my contact information, um, but reaching out to uh, the dean or the academic affairs department within a technical college, they'll be able to, to connect you to uh, the people who are setting up those committees. Um, and, and it is, you hear about it and you, you think kind of, the big companies, like even within my electrical line work program, you immediately think about Georgia Power and they must be, you know, the industry partner. Um, But we work very hard to make sure um, our instructors are working with everybody within the area. Mm -hmm. And so any small company that is looking to learn more about us or looking to um, invest in us um, and and share ideas and share needs, um, I encourage you to to reach out to me. my office number is 706-754-7880. Um, but also, uh, and it's also, it's also on the technical college website. It is all of the, um, all the, for all the contact information. So all of these instructors that you're mentioning, the different deans, it's all on the website, which is, is what we love about the partnerships with these organizations. You, it's not like this hidden paywall of information. <laughs> you can go right to the organization website and many of them have like the direct contact, the information, and it, it doesn't take, I'm, I'm saying this, but also like, correct me if I'm wrong. It doesn't take a long time, you know, no, because doesn't. when you're, and you know, when, when you're strapped for time um, and you already don't have a lot of resource capacity, We hate to say, like, add another thing to your to-do list, Mm -hmm. but it's one of those things that you add to the top because it takes so little time that you feel like you've accomplished something at the end of the day. So, like, go ahead and add that to the top, um, which is kind of leads into our second action item is to reach out to local partners. So Mm -hmm. one of the things that you say, Michelle, is like we work in an eight county area. You know, and we work in the state of Georgia. Um, there are 22 other technical colleges. 
depending on where you, this isn't something that is unique to Georgia. This yeah. is something that, you know, regardless of where you are, there are local educational institutions that do the same things that you are talking about right now. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, and it's one of those things where as, as you're working with a technical college in your area or in other states, some may, may refer to it as a community college in their area, um, they have close partnerships with the other schools within their state. Um, so what you may see as a need in your area, other schools and, and other industry partners um, are probably seeing the same thing. And so being able to keep that communication open, um, meeting the instructors, talking about what you're needing to see so that we can kind of shift standards um, and, and shift our focus within the classroom, um, it, it really can make a ripple effect and a huge impact, um, not just there within your area, but across the state. So what do you see? I mean, this is this is obviously not something that like you have an immediate problem. This is going to be an immediate solution. You know, it takes this, a little this, bit. <laughs> this is absolutely a long term solution, you know, mm-hmm. and you have to think of it from a strategic planning perspective. Um, mm-hmm. So, yes, we all know that people are experiencing, um, you know, resource capacity issues right now. And we have the need now for people to understand mm-hmm. digital. Um, so in a world where I'm trying to do my plan and figure out, OK, how do I solution what I have? How long is it going to take if I'm reporting to the board, if I'm reporting to executive leadership, whatever that looks like? We're talking about getting involved with the advisory committee. We're talking Mm -hmm. about creating certification programs for current employees. We're talking about creating these kind of talent pipeline to make sure that people come into the company and they already have these foundational skill sets. How long does that take you guys to actually put something together? Well, it all depends on what it is. Um, and and I work in the academic affairs side, which is a bit more of the traditional um, transcript credit, uh, what you sort of think about when you think of going to college and, and taking courses. We also have a department um, here called Economic Development. They also partner with industry and they work on creating um, tailored instruction to the industry's need. So it, it really starts with um, what is your goal? What is your objective? What do you need? And then depending on how quickly you want training or retraining to happen, um, you may be working with my department within academic affairs, which would be the tr- traditional instructors and, and the diploma or degree programs. Um, or you could be working with economic development and they're tailoring coursework uh, to your needs. And it could be, you know, one day of training. It could be um, five or six months of training. And um, they have a little more freedom and ability to to go into the industry and, and teach there, um, to bring in some of their experts to, to guide instruction. Um, with what objectives you may have, um, or if you're looking for something a bit more formal and adjusting objectives and standards, um, students can partner with us. We talked a little bit about apprenticeship earlier, um, but being able to have traditional classes one or two days a week um, and then earning those diplomas, degrees, certificates along the way. Absolutely. So what are, you you mentioned economic development. We Mm -hmm. are talking about the, um, you know, the technical college community. What are some other organizations when we say, you know, reach out to local partners? Mm -hmm. um, What are some other organizations? And I think when you and I were talking about what could be something useful to share, you know, when, when people think, hey, I need to get my employees and my team members trained Mm -hmm. or I need to get this other person in here quickly, like staffing job boards, you know, staffing agency at job boards. And then Mm -hmm. um, what was the other one we said, Michelle? ah, Staffing agencies, job boards, and um, ah, I don't remember, but those are the two things that, you know, come to mind. Um, What are some other, you know, solutions and local organizations to where 
you know, I, I don't have the budget necessarily for a staffing agency. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to partner with some of these other local organizations because what a, what a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of these local organizations also get grant funds and they have, you know, money readily available to support small businesses, especially now within the manufacturing space, as we're talking about reshoring and, you know, bringing a lot of infrastructure back into the states. There are a lot of programs that are available if you don't have a big budget, but people just don't really know where to look. Is there a database or like is reaching out to the technical college a good first step? Like how how could they navigate that? Yes. So I would say reaching out to the technical college is a a good first step. Um, You mentioned uh, job boards and and we have something similar here at our college um, where people reach out to our school. They have different positions that they're trying to fill. Um, We're able to send that out uh, across our school. So all students are aware of it. And then as instructors see it and it applies to their programs, they actually have places to post it within their labs and within their classrooms. Um, So immediate employment, um, that's a really great step. Um, With the programs that I work with, Um, which are the traditional hands-on trade programs, we're really looking at our scheduling and trying to uh, help students maximize their time out in field. So uh, as we're looking at putting together full-time schedules, we often have them in class two days a week, leaving them three to four days a week to be able to work out in the field. Um, And again, that, that relationship with the instructors They are able to find the students that are really kind of understanding the material quickly for semester. They're ready to start working in the field as they continue their their academic journey. And um, and with the schedules, you're able to kind of predict when they're in class, when they're available to work. Um, So so those are always really great, great things to work with and do. And one of the it kind of takes us we're, we're flowing very nicely and we <laughs> we didn't I, I did not I, I mean I, I made the action items this morning for Nicole to flash across the banner here but you and I did not have a like flow of conversation chat mm-hmm. it just happens to be flowing that way um, so you know right now we're talking about having a realistic development timeline. Mm -hmm. And the reason why that just came into my mind is because it's one of those things. So as I'm hearing what you're saying, it's putting some of the onus also back on the manufacturer. So you do have to have some sort of idea and plan around for long term, we are going to be looking to work with the technical college through this, you know, an apprenticeship program, you also have to create it. You know, mm-hmm. it's kind of, I um, I forget, I think I attended a, a webinar with CSCMP a couple of weeks ago. Um, and it was, you know, what do, what do hourly employees want? Like, what do they want to see? How do they want to be treated? Um, and aside from the obvious of like, they want to be treated like you treat salaried employees. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. Aside from that, one of the things that they talked about was like, they want to know where to go when they get there, who to talk to, you know, how to navigate the building, parking mm-hmm. instructions, things like that. So I'm, I'm making this kind of connection to, yeah, you want to have an apprenticeship program. And it's nice to say we want to have an apprenticeship program. But what does that look like within your organization? You know, does someone do like you said, if they're if they're if they're with us for two or three days and they're doing school the other two, you know, two or three days? Well, then what happens after that? You know, what's this actually career development plan? And I find that as we're doing software implementations, as we're doing a lot of these, you know, digital transformation initiatives, that can get missed a lot of times to where, okay, why do I care as an individual to learn these things? You know, what is what is my growth trajectory within the company look like? How is it different if I do learn the things, if I don't learn the things and my fast track to, you know, supervisor? Like, what does that look like? And it's not just, OK, we had some kids that, you know, studied while they worked and now they're working and we're not providing them any other additional, you know, career path. Yeah, Um I think what we see with our students is um, 
first of all, anyone that they work for that's willing to invest in them, um, they, they can appreciate and understand, one, some of the sacrifice or some of the um, unusual scheduling that had to happen in order for their dreams to be achieved. Um, and, and that's one of those things that it's hard to measure the value of, um, but you know that your employees see that and, and know it. Um, but the other thing that, that we see is we work very hard to make sure that we're not just teaching students the standards and, and having lecture and going through a textbook. We really value the hands-on learning um, and the hands-on aspect of their career because we, we have them, and, and depending on the program, we have them anywhere from eight weeks to you know five or six semesters to, to really let them understand what field they're entering into and what great life they can build from that. When you can partner that with working in the industry at the same time, there is a switch that goes off where students really understand um, what they're doing and they they have a, a love or they have um, kind of that, that flame of interest mm -hmm. ignite. And that really makes a huge difference. So um, we, and, and I'll use air conditioning, for example, it's, it's a program that's anywhere from three to, to four semesters long, depending on what schedule they take. Um, but the first semester is very heavy in theory. And so a lot of students come out of high school or, or come to us non-traditionally and they think technical college, I'm gonna go out in the lab, I'm gonna wire up some stuff and make everything cool. Um, and it, it's tough because you have to understand the foundation of it before you can really get your hands into the equipment and safely work around it. Um, being able to also work out in the field um, helps them understand what the refrigeration cycle they're learning about in class mm -hmm. is, is actually happening and why it's important. And as they continue to grow and you go from residential to commercial and you realize just how big some of these chillers are and some places that we walk around like hospitals and kind of um, take for granted what all is is happening to keep this place running and operating for everybody. When you realize where your career can grow in all of this, um, it it really creates uh, for us a better graduate. But what what we have seen is for employers, it, it's better employees um, because they're understanding the full circle of it. Mm -hmm. We work really hard to make sure our labs um, are following industry standard as best we can. They look like what they're going to see out in the field. But at the end of the day, it is it is a classroom of some sort. So it's not always exactly like what they're going to walk into when they walk into, you know, a manufacturing floor. Mm -hmm. um, and so we see our students that are, are working and learning together. Um, they are grasping the concepts faster. They're becoming better employees and, and they're better students because they're asking more challenging questions. They're working with the other students in groups to, to push each other a little further and explain what they're seeing on the job and how it could vary from the lab they're doing here. It's, it's quite impressive to walk around and see. Now, um, you, you, you mentioned a couple of things um, and it got me to thinking about my education. You know, mm -hmm. I went through traditional four-year university mm -hmm. um, and we've talked a lot at, you know, different manufacturing and construction conferences of how they just really, you know, when I was growing up, it was four-year college, four-year college, go to mm -hmm. four-year college. No one ever talked about trade school. No one ever talked about technical college. It was very much a, like, almost a stigma to, you know, to doing it. Mm -hmm. And we talk about that a lot within the industry as a reason for the the current, you know, talent shortage mm -hmm. <laughs> is that no one went to school 10 years ago for, you know, these types of programs. But also to your point, things are changing so quickly that, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's hard for academia to really keep up. Mm -hmm. with how quickly like data is changing and AI and ML and blockchain and, you know, advanced manufacturing and 3D printing. And it's almost kind of like things are happening overnight if you compare it to how quickly, you know, the education system can keep up. Um, so that brings me to, you mentioned certifications. Mm -hmm. um, so how is like working with 
uh, uh, you know, your team different from, oh, I want to send my employees through like a Six Sigma certification mm -hmm. or I want to send them through, um, you know, some sort of certification. There are plenty of certification bodies and partners and you can find them and, you know, say, hey, can you come do this thing at, at our company two or three days? How is it different, you know, actually creating a tailored certification um, for like current employees and what do those time, you know, lines normally look like from completion, but also how much time does it actually take? I mean, you those people who are current employees that are going through these certification programs aren't going two or three days a week to school. You know, are they doing it in the evenings? Um, how much time do your industry partners provide for their employees to actually do these sorts of certification and training programs? So, so that moves over into the economic development side a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but it really, it, it's up to the industry and what they're looking for. I know um, a, a lot of times um, industry is not wanting to, to change um, what's happening on the line. And as, as they're working with employees that are running different shifts, they want everyone to receive additional training, but they can't just stop for three days or for a week and a half. Um, so they they work with our econo economic development team to bring someone in and, um, and they kind of map out what times or what days or how frequently um, is gonna work for them and, and their needs. I know some of my instructors, um, We'll work with economic development as instructors on Fridays. Our school is open Monday through Thursday, traditionally. Um, so they may be going into uh, an industry partner every Friday for three months, um, working with you know one group of people before lunch, before they're going on shift, and then picking up another group maybe after lunch as they're coming off a of shift. Um, sometimes they will want you know three days in a row, or they'll look at um, bringing people in on the weekend. Um, but as far as investing in your current employees and having short-term training, it, it really is a conversation of what you need. And then we work to, to make sure that we can make that happen. Mm -hmm. um, if there are cert, um, certifications within my side of things that you're looking for, as we're having those conversations, we can look at how we can adjust the schedule in the upcoming semester to be able to help with that. Um, our traditional semesters are 15, 16 weeks long, um, but we also have mini masters. So we can look at teaching classes in an eight week time period. Um, and that way we're able to kind of adjust some things um, so that, you know, one day a week or one morning a week, um, you know, you have someone coming to us and, and they're getting training on the traditional credit side of college. Um, but you also know how long that will last and, and it's not forever. Right. Absolutely. Um, and it just it gave me a thought. So we have a couple of comments um, that I do want to get to. Mm -hmm. um, I agree wholeheartedly. We were talking about, you know, the talent pipeline um, and to start reaching out to high schools and middle schools and start mm -hmm. to partner with them, um, which, yes, we love. Um, uh, Drew Crow is doing this. Megan Zimba is doing this. Um, there are a couple of people who are like dedicating themselves to like this is what they do is they go around and they make manufacturing fun and they talk about technology and they talk about all of the, you know, fun things. And even women in manufacturing, I, I've been seeing a lot of, um, I think it's important also, and you and I talked about this a little bit in that when you do a Google search, you're not necessarily finding the best solutions or the best answers. You're finding whoever has the larger ad budget and like who, <laughs> who can get on the first page of Google. Um, and, and what that means is that like you miss a lot of, you know, what could really be the right solution for, um, you know, for your organization. I wonder how many people watching, I know that I personally, if I think about when I did my master's, when I did, um, you know, when I studied industrial engineering undergrad and then master's in engineering management, 
to your point, you know, the fundamentals, like mm -hmm. the fundamentals of how these things work. You know, we talked about total quality. We like did some stuff in mini tab, which I've literally never seen again. <laughs> um, we did some things in Excel, not nearly enough for me to like mm -hmm. be able to actually use it, you know, um, not to actually use it when you're working. Um, and, you know, Laura said, learn while you're on the job gives you an incredible advantage. And I think that what we need to ideally do from an education perspective and like an industry partnership is to really figure out where that line is. You know, yeah. what, where does the line blur from like, this is what you learned in school and setting the expectation with industry that like, obviously people aren't just gonna come in here and know everything. Mm -hmm. And we also did not make this, you know, two-year degree program just for your company <laughs> and the way you guys do business. Mm -hmm. um, so, so there is that expectation setting. And again, a lot of the onus, this is not a way to say, hey, manufacturers, go put off your workforce development and like reskilling and upskilling, you know, challenges on the technical college <laughs> or on, you know, your state MEP or on your local economic development team. It's really... How do you work with them to figure out how to best have a good, robust workforce development, reskilling and upskilling, you know, plan at your at your own organization? Well, and, and you mentioned, you know, working with middle school and high schools and, and having students realize what options that they have. We we just um, had I think it was three hundred and twenty five eighth graders come through our campus yesterday. And, and what we are working with the middle schools in our area is, um, you know, they're in Georgia, they pick their pathways for high school that they're going to take concentrated classes and, and learn about as far as the CTAE um, courses inside of things at the high school. And so we were inviting eighth graders in so that they could see our programs and they pick specific paths that they were interested in um, so that they could see the programs that we offer that fall into um, these ideas that they care about and, and enjoy right now so that as they're picking high school classes, they can also see a future of how they're building that into um, possible dual enrollment classes while they're in high school, possible uh, programs to complete once they graduate through us, and then what industry and what, what careers could lay out for them after their, their you know, two years with us. Mm -hmm. when they graduate. Um, the other thing, we're having lots of conversations with our local high schools. Um, they have a very strong work-based learning group where students are, you know, getting done with credits in high school. They're going out to work for part of the day. And, um, and manufacturers are starting to realize, you know, we've got some students that are coming to us in high school work-based learning. We're talking to them about the different positions and places that they could fit within our company when they graduate. And because they have a relationship with us, they can talk to them about either dual enrollment classes to start taking their junior and senior year to, to get them ready for that, or what uh, apprenticeship may look like once they graduate high school and, and they come take classes with us while working or, you know, continue to work part time with them while they finish a degree with us. Um, you know, it, it all goes back to networking and and being willing to talk about where we are, what we need and how we can help each other, because mm -hmm. um, when we're helping each other, we're helping our community areas and we're all becoming stronger. Absolutely. Um, and takes us to our, we have a 10 minute warning a couple minutes ago from Nicole. So getting to our final action item, um, consider external partners for immediate needs um, and not, you know, necessarily staffing agencies. Um, one of the things that we've talked about, um, you know, you and I, and just in conversations is, you know, consultants, like mm -hmm. as much as it's a dirty word, no one <laughs> wants to talk about consultants. No one ever wants to use consultants. You know, there is value in mm -hmm. having a consultant come in um, and number one, even just help you navigate that process, you know, navigate everything that we've been talking about, um, because realistically going through these steps, it does take time. If you're already strapped for time and you're already mm -hmm. at capacity, um, then, yeah, the, the five minute activity of reaching out to Michelle, that's a five minute activity. 
but then all of the follow-up and being a part of the advisory committee and really working to figure out what that long-term, you know, talent pipeline could look like, what the near-term certification creation could look like. None of that is done overnight, no. um, but having a consultant who does understand this is where your current skills gap is could be the person to just, you know, put that load of the actual grunt work, you know, for lack of a better term, onto them of having the conversations um, and kind of outsourcing that piece of it. Um, and then, of course, in the meantime, you do need people who understand these, you know, advanced technologies and software and things like that so they can help you navigate it. But really having, again, always a clear plan. I can't like <laughs> beat a dead horse enough, like always having a clear plan of uh, this is short term, you mm -hmm. know, and I know, you know, Denise joined, I don't know if she's still on, but Denise is like a guru in SNOP training. You know, I know that my team, we do specific like digital supply chain training where can you automate things like that? Um, mm -hmm. So there are, you know, consultants who've been doing this for a long time. And the benefit of a consultant is that they often touch a lot of different companies. Mm -hmm. And they can bring in those different ideas and say, well, you've been at this company for 15 years. Well, in the last 15 years, I've talked to 25 companies. So these are com some of the, the, the missteps that we've seen. Let's avoid those. The things that have been great, let's do more of that and implement it here. Mm -hmm. um, what are some other immediate you know, steps that you have seen some different manufacturers take? Um. I'm so I'm not real sure. I'm not real sure how to answer that. Um, the answer could be nothing. There is no silver bullet. <laughs> There's, there is a, it's, a, it's a problem that we're all facing. Other it is that, like you just got to good things take time. It is. And and I think um, everyone is trying to figure out when to make adjustments if if their processes are working correctly or if there is kind of a time to change and time to adjust. Um, I, I don't know that I've, I've got a perfect answer for that. Um, but I do know as as I've been invited into uh, manufacturing companies through this position, um, everyone seems to be searching for um, how do we continue to improve? And I, I think that is where we kind of find that common ground uh, with us at the technical college too. How do we continue to improve? Because it's very easy to look at programs um, like welding or like commercial truck driving and say, you know, we've got our courses, we know how to do it. We can make drivers, we can make welders, just come to us. Um, but we can't become stagnant. And, and so it, it's why our continued conversations with, with industry, with people who are out there working, with people who are hiring our graduates or looking to hire our graduates, it's, it's so important because we're all searching for how to continue to make this better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what Gil said. Collaborative, creative approaches to solve mm -hmm. problem, common problems is a good start. And yes. what I'm taking away from that is setting the expectation with leadership mm -hmm. that it's it, you're playing the long game. You mm -hmm. know, it's not necessarily something that is going to be a, a quick fix. Um, I spoke with a general contractor um, or maybe maybe this was part of our, maybe it came up during our professional development committee um, meeting for the Modular Building Institute. Um, but the, the CEO of a, a GC firm was saying, yeah, I would love to do more, you know, modular, more industrialized construction, more mm -hmm. things with technology. But in order to do that, I need the people who know how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and if I don't have those people, I need to teach my people which doesn't solve my immediate need of wanting to take on the projects because now I have to teach the people. So it's, and there aren't enough people <laughs> that are out there that have the skill set that I need. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's one of those things to where misery loves company. <laughs> So like, we battle that same catch 22. We, we're, we're all we dealing with the same catch 22. We're all working mm -hmm. to try to figure it out. So, you know, ultimately buckle down, you know, understand expectations, set them, fit in consultants where you can, but also mm -hmm. just know that you're going to have to do the training 
and it's going to take time for people to, to learn it. Mm -hmm. And, and we offer training and, and all sorts of lengths and depths. And so where we can assist and help, um, we would love to because we're stronger all together. Absolutely. All righty. And that concludes today's show. Thanks so much for joining Michelle, taking some time this Friday morning. Um, thank you for listening and supporting our show. If today's content resonated with you or if you're seeking hands on support for your digital supply chain and resilient business operations needs, visit NugentArchitects.com to schedule a free discovery session with a member of our team. And if you want to be sure to never miss a show and catch recordings, be sure to sign up for our newsletter at the same site, NugentArchitects.com or at Let'sTalkSupplyChain.com and looking for the little drop down action items and we'll be there. Have a great weekend, everyone.